A lot of people have asked me how to make pho, and so we've showed pho in one of our episodes before, and it looks so amazing. And um, I just wanted to share with you guys how I make pho. Because my nephew over here, his name is Christopher, oh, is always asking for uh, pho. Not his mom's pho, but his uncle's pho. And so I'm about to show you guys how it's done. Pho is like a Vietnamese cuisine uh, rice noodle soup that is has been like an epidemic across the United States because in every corner it seems like there's a pho restaurant, right? Even in the white areas of the world. Let me just show you guys the ingredients on what goes into pho, at least into my pho, okay? So I got some, we're making beef pho today. I usually make chicken, but today's a special day. It's my grandmother's birthday. Happy birthday! <laughs> okay, so it's my grandma's birthday and we're gonna make some beef. She loves beef. So I got some roast here, beef meatballs, got some beef bouillons, got oyster sauce, okay? You can get all these at the Asian store. Got some cilantro, that's right, green onions. This is the magic recipe here as well. And then got some beef soup bones. Be sure it's the knuckle bones. I mean, you can use other types of bones, but the knuckle bones are the best ones because it just is. We have these white onions as well. All, all we really need is just one. You can also have bean sprouts for, you know, after you know, when you start eating it and then basil and stuff like that, but we're not gonna have that today. Yeah, so that's basically all you need. It doesn't take days to make like those Vietnamese brothers and sisters out there that's telling you how amazing their pho is. It doesn't take that long. It's gonna take like, you might boil it for like maybe two or three hours and you'll be eating some good pho. Here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I got this big pot. I'm gonna fill this up with water. So white girl over here says, has uh, kind of put in her two cents that I was taught bones, by his mother, so. Well, my pho is better than my mom's, according to so Angel. So you haven't made beef pho see, in a long see, time. Verify that. Yeah, but, yes, it is. <laughs> Hold up, yes. but the chicken pho can be done in two to three hours, but he hasn't made beef pho in a long time. It does need at least three hours, in my opinion, okay. to get the marrow and my from mistake. the bones to be like I have been at humbled. least good enough. At least to three hours for the beef At bones. least. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is finally full. Okay, now we're gonna bring it over here. You want me to turn it on. Way? I want to get this boiling pretty good. Now, while that's starting to boil, you want to put the bouillon cubes in. That's right. So I put four cubes in. That's what they look like. Just drop it on in there. It's uh, never quiet here at the Lee house. So I've been wanting to do this for a while because I've always waited because it's either not clean enough at my house or in the kitchen or the kids are crying, but you know what? There's no way around that. Okay, so we got that in the pot. Now what we want to do, cilantro. We want to cut the ends of the cilantro off. And then, you see these rubber bands here off the, off the green onions? You want to keep at least one of them and you'll see why here in a sec, okay? So I'm gonna cut the ends off, the whole bunch. Be sure you wash it, because there's a lot of dirt in cilantro. And then you take this bunch here, take this rubber band, and you triple wrap it. So it just adds a little bit of something something, you know what I mean, the cilantro ends. So basically just take this, pop it in. The oyster sauce. Now I'm not gonna have measurements of how much, like, oyster sauce, but you can just watch how much I put in. It's all just uh, 
how much you prefer. And you can always add in if you want, okay? That's about good. Now I got some salt here. This is the Himalayan pink salt. You can use regular salt, but my wife is high class, so she goes for the Himalayan salt. Um, you can get this at Costco or anywhere else, but we buy by the bulk. And Himalayan salt seems to be more potent. So if you have regular salt, you might need more. That's about good. Just kind of stir it. So this is making the, the broth. Once the beef bones go in, that's what, you know, gives it the nice flavor. And, that, and the longer you boil it, the better. But we're trying to eat around like, what, five or six? It won't be boiling for too, too long, but it'll still be good. Tomorrow, the day after pho is always the best. So now what I want to do is put the bones in. I'm going to wash these. I've just always been taught by my parents to wash the meat, so that's what I do. So, next step. So you got, so that's pretty much, you just let it boil. And um, it'll take some time to start boiling, but you just let it boil and boil and boil. The longer you let it boil, the better, okay? And you can taste it every now and then once the, the beef bones cook up. You can taste it and you can add more salt if you need to. The other special secret step. If you got a pan that you really don't care for, don't throw it away because you can use it to make pho. And um, as you can see, this is like all jacked up. It's all burnt all over the place, but it's okay. You got this onion. And then we're gonna blacken it, right? We're gonna burn it. It gives it some some good flavor. I'm gonna cut the ends of the onion off and cut it into essentially eights, just like so. Essentially, you take these. when our stove was just like the electric coil version, like all the stuff that we needed to burn for like food, like making sauces and stuff or fuzz, we just throw it on the, the coil and just let it burn that way. But you know what, we've graduated from the ghetto. We've worked harder in our lives and we've gotten ourselves out of the projects of uh, Haltom City. So um, yeah, so, so we're privileged now to have propane gas. So as that's going, let me get my chopsticks real quick because chopsticks are what I use to flip these guys over once they're black. And it's always nice to just have like a little plate here because you can rest stuff on. Just a little, just a little tip for you guys. It's, it's most really, people have something already. Most man. people have something it's like professional, the, like a ladle. Holder. Yes, a ladle. <laughs> but hey, just because you're removed from the ghetto doesn't mean that the ghetto's not in you still. You know what I mean? So while that's going, take a few minutes while that that's boiling and stuff to cut up the cilantro and the green onions for later whenever you know we're ready to eat. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash the cilantro. Okay, so we just chop them up like this. Watch out for your finger. Safety first in everything we do, right Rossini? Is it nap time? Safety first, guys. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> and now we got the green onions. I love, love, love green onions. Like I can eat it whole. I don't want stank breath for church. And usually we'll have like um, shrimp paste and we'll cut off the ends just like this. I recently dropped it. Christina wasted a whole thing of shrimp paste, you dropped it on the floor and so we don't have any more shrimp paste. So it's pretty much fermented <laughs> shrimp. And um, I know it sounds gross, but it is. It's good, it makes food taste good. It does make food good taste good. So awesome. I'll cut off the ends here, we don't want to eat that. But even though we don't have shrimp paste, 
I'm going to cut them off anyways because I like to eat them whole afterwards. So I'm going to set that to the side. Um, so then you just cut the green onions in small American. little. <laughs> what do you call this? Do you mince it? Is this called? No. What do you call it? Just dicing. Or Dice? Chopping. I don't know the proper term for this. Dicing is like way smaller. Chopping? Chopping is like this, no? I don't know. Just cut it. Just chop. Julian style? I ain't no, no that's me. definitely not Julian. I don't know. I just heard that from friends. I ain't no Gordon. Limes are very important. Rossi loves limes in her. Okay. Limes are delicious. So let me show y'all. Limes are important. And which ones to pick are the ones that are like thin, um, where it's kind of like, what do you call it? Shiny and thin. Right, the, the uh, skin of the lime is thin. Like for example, this one's no good guys, come on. Now, the reason we got this one is because we had H-E-B deliver and they just, those guys just put whatever in the <laughs> bag, right? So I would never pick this one because this is, this is ridiculous guys. The skin is thicker than the actual lime itself. So we're not gonna use this one. So these are good and you can feel them as well, okay? And what'd be good is, a lot of times you can, if, if they're cold, you can just make them soft. That way it's a little bit more juicy. I'm gonna wash this. Go. And we just cut them. I need to sharpen my knife. I'm flipping it. Whoa, I almost cut myself. <laughs> These are super stuck. Trixie does it a little bit differently than I do. I put a tiny bit of Pam on here so they don't get stuck like this. <laughs> so you see this nice little plate of veggies. You know, if we had the mint and stuff, the basil, the Thai basil, you know, the, what do you call it, the bean sprouts. We're missing out on the bean sprouts because I really like bean sprouts in my pho. But you know what? That's all right. We're we still gonna be good. Them yesterday? Yeah, we forgot to buy them. But it's gonna be good e e either way. So what we do is we plastic wrap over it and put it in the fridge until later tonight when we start eating. Okay, so we set this aside. So with these meatballs, we don't put them in until like five minutes before we're about to eat because they're pretty much already cooked. So you just want to warm them up. I'm gonna cut them into like not slices, but like quarters or halves. Um, but I'm gonna focus on the meat right now. This right here, and with this knife being as dull as it is, it ain't gonna work, guys. You gotta have a really sharp knife to cut into this thing. And I'm gonna cheat, because I have a knife sharpener. Um, I'm not like my mom, where she uses a little thing, or she uses two knives to sharpen. It's like steel, steel sharpening steel. My mom, she's a, uh, you know, straight from the jungles of Laos, you know what I mean? So she, they gotta figure stuff out over there. But over here in America, in these parts, you just kinda do it this way. It's called technology. Okay, let's see how that does. I'm gonna rinse this off to rinse off the metal. Yep. Uh, just for good measure, Mom. See my sigh over here? See that? I can do it too. You ever seen this, Rossi? Nice music. Here we go. Sharpening it. This is how my mom would do it. Let's see if that works, Rossi. Oh, you see that? Just, ooh. Look at that. I, I mean, I'm just barely. This is like the Excalibur. Sorry. So, we're not going to probably use. If you want to use gloves, you can, but again, I'm straight from the ghetto, so. Um, we're probably gonna use half, and then we'll save the other half for next time. You see how I'm, I'm not putting very much pressure? And this bad boy is just slicing right through. You know what I mean? We just want like thin slices, right? So I'm gonna cut it like this again. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, that's perfectly good roast, why are you cutting it like that? What I'm gonna do is 
it probably needs to even be thinner than that, guys. See that? That's a little too thick. Because, because eventually what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pour the broth over the meat. See how thin that is? My mom's a master at this. We're just trying to get as thin as possible. It might take a little bit longer. I know you'll be tempted to cut it thicker to get it done faster. Oh no, 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 my friends. You don't do that. You will mess it up because you won't be able to boil, you know, cook the meat the way it's supposed to be cooked. Because whenever we cook the meat, we just put the meat in the bowl, and then we put the broth on it, and then it cooks it. So if it's too thick, the meat's gonna be way too rare for you guys, and you're probably not gonna like it. Okay. Now oh, that's a good piece right there. See that? So you just cut, cut, cut. The sharper the knife. The sharper the knife, the better. And this actually could be sharper. But you know what? It'll work for now. Oh my gosh, you forgot about those onions. The Wait. more burnt, the better. That's the beautiful no, thing about I it. Hate, they like crumble in my mouth. Oh my gosh. You don't have to eat them. I know, I end up throwing them out. So. Just so you guys know, it's okay if it's, it's not like, if it's too burnt, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to burn it. We're trying to make it black. Let's check it out. See how black it is? That's perfect in my opinion. Okay. And whenever, you know, Christina doesn't have to put it in her soup. It's fine. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's actually it better in my opinion. We're just going to cut this up and then we'll see you guys when I'm done with this. All right, guys, so I am finally done slicing up the beef. I've just been reminded why I don't cook the beef up as frequently. It's because it's a labor of love, and you have to take, I mean, this took probably like, I don't know, 20 minutes or so? I don't know how long it took. It, it took a long time, my fingers are hurting, my back's hurting. The meat's done. We're just gonna set it to the side. We're gonna put it in the fridge. Come check out this over here. See all this foam? We want to take that out, okay? As much as we can. You don't need to take all of it out, but it's good every now and then to just take out the foam. So we have a little jar here. So we're just gonna do that. This is just like fat from the meat or from the bones. So you don't want your soup to be too fatty. I like it fatty, but. Some people don't. We got some noodles yesterday, as you guys saw at the store. There's thicker ones. Okay, so listen. And then there's thinner ones. We're gonna try both today. We usually get this one, but um, these are a little bit thicker. But at the at the photo restaurants, I use the really thin ones. So we're gonna try both. And so what we're gonna do? Get a little big bowl like this you fill up with warm water and you soak the noodles so last time i made pho it was kind of like a disaster just because the noodles were all messed up we tried a different brand um, we tried this one because we thought hey man this is from laos you know it's pretty legit but the noodles fell apart on us and it was, it was just like all mushy and just not a great experience. I was disappointed because the broth was amazing. Um, and so we got this brand today and we're gonna try this brand. We're just trying to mix it up. You know, we went to the Korean, the, the Korean, the H Mart. And so they didn't have the ones that we usually buy. So we're gonna try this one. We're looking at the difference of the two and I didn't want these ones to break either because these are thinner as well. We usually, again, get the thicker ones. And these don't break. Um, we usually get the medium ones, not the large ones. These are the large ones. And so we're looking at the difference, and there is a significant difference in the thickness of the noodles. This one goes with this one. Okay. This dragonfly one goes with this one. It's much thicker. What we do is we soak the noodles to make them a little bit softer. So this is warm water, and we just kind of soak it until we're ready to cook it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Hopefully, I'm hoping that it doesn't break apart like this one, 
But because it's thicker, I don't think it will break apart. I guess we'll see. Okay. Um. All right. We soak this and we just let it sit until we're ready to cook it. One time I forgot and we just had to sit and wait for it to soak. Because when it soaks, you can tell it's ready and it turns white. This is kind of what it looks like when everything's ready to go. Got the meatballs there. Got the greens. Got the meat all sliced up. Then got the noodles. Okay. Now we're ready to go and when we're ready to eat, everything goes smoothly. There's no hiccups, hopefully. And um, yeah, everything goes nice. You don't want to wait too long, like start getting these things ready whenever you know it's time to eat because it takes a while, as you guys can see. And you don't want to be like trying to, you know, be in a rush, right? So you just want to, you know, boil the water, you know, boil the noodles, put the broth in, put the ingredients in, and then eat right away because pho is best when it's hot. So once it starts boiling like this, you can actually turn it down and just have it more of like a rolling boil, like a simmer-ish type of thing. So you can turn it down and it just kind of, again, it's gonna boil for a few hours, right? So you just let it boil, the bones will boil, the flavor's all gonna just seep out of those bones. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go to church and then when we get back, we're gonna continue and uh, show you guys how it's really done. Okay guys, we just got home from church. This house smells delicious. The savory smell of fuzz in our home. It's the most amazing smell in the world. Okay, JD, hi JD. Hi. You ready to take your church clothes off? Mm -hmm. Whoa, okay. So here is what it looks like so far. Oh my gosh, that is looking so good. Now there's some fat on top of this here, which Kind of just have to. Can I get some cheese? See that? And then just. Can I, get some I can't wait to eat this. It's gonna be so yummy. I haven't had pifa in a long, long time. At least homemade. It's a lot different when it's homemade. It doesn't taste like this, the uh, restaurant style. It tastes better. Check out these noodles. You'll see the difference between when I first put them in and what they look like now. They turn white. Surprise. That means they're ready to go. Ready to go. Ready for your surprise? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk to mom. See what your surprise is from yesterday. You done? Yeah. Good job. So what we got here are the soup bones. Okay. They aren't just for the soup. We we actually eat what's on it. See that? You see the some fat. You see some meat. You see some tendons. Oh, that is the good stuff. That is the good stuff. So we're gonna cut all that off the bones and then um, put it in our pho. Check this out, this is the good stuff. I know some of y'all out there are gonna be like, that's disgusting, that's nothing but fat. Right, hon? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the good stuff here. We're gonna cut it up, put them in a bowl, and then those who want it can have it. Those who don't want it, well, too bad. More for me. See this? That's it guys, look at that. But it's, it's just coming off. It's essentially it right here guys. You just do all this. And if, and if you're a real man, you just take this bone right here and just gnaw on it. <laughs> like a caveman. Let me show you how it's done right here, see? Take oh. this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Clean it up. Clean it up. <laughs> sometimes you'll find little spots where you can suck out the juice. Or like sometimes there'll be marrow and stuff. This is all we had to eat when we were kids. <laughs> they just give you and a bone like a dog. They just throw you a bone and you're like, Third world, man. Yep. And so, <laughs> so for this stuff, like all this food, we're appreciative, right? Because we have plenty. But we also appreciate it by eating it. Not like some of these kids these days who don't appreciate food like this. All right, this is uh, this is amazing stuff. Okay, guys. So basically, we're gonna do the whole thing. All this stuff right here. 
I'm gonna cut it up and I'm gonna share it with my brother Nane. And um, if people are lucky enough, I'll share it with the other people too. I know Christina's not gonna eat. See this? She's probably not gonna eat that. And you know, maybe that's not the most healthy thing to eat. Every now and then, it's okay. Nothing goes to waste. Okay. Look, even here, you even got some meat right here, right? That's, oh, that's a good oh man, look at that. Holy smokes. Yeah, I'll eat the meat, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, see, the, the rich white folk would just eat the meat. Yeah. All right, so the kids are eating first, then the adults will eat next. Let's see how they think this pho tastes. So, what do y'all think about the pho? Uh, thumbs up? Mm -hmm. No words? Oh, Christopher gives it a thumbs up. What about you, Jane? Yeah, what about, what about you, Ty? Thumbs up. Jet, is it yummy? Mm -hmm. I, oh, Alexander. you're dipping your pez in there? <laughs> Alexander's <laughs> doing this. What do you think, Alexander? As long as Christopher likes it, I'm happy. Plus, he's cleaning house over here. Look, is that good? <laughs> All right, guys, we are ready to chow down. It is 8 o'clock, 8.15. Put the kids to bed. They all ate, put the kids to bed, and now we're starving. So, I want to show you guys the intricacies of making pho. So we got the noodles here. These are the rice noodles. You essentially just put like that, okay? Now you gotta have a pot of boiling water here so that you can uh, cook the, the, the rice noodles. So all you do is just pour it in and it only stays in here for maybe, probably no more than like 30 seconds, okay? And you have to use chopsticks or else it doesn't work right. <laughs> use whatever you want, but chopsticks is the way to go because we're eating pho. Done. Okay, you don't want it too long because if you put it in there too long, then it becomes too soft and soggy. No one likes soft and soggy noodles, right? So, put it in here. Now, you got your cooked noodles. This is when the beef slices come in. When they're sliced thinly as possible. These are, that one's a little bit thick, but most of these are pretty good, okay? want to lay them out on the bowl just like so and you're probably wondering what in the world are you doing succeed that looks disgusting when I put the broth in here it's gonna cook the meat okay you don't want to cook the meat too long because then it becomes a little bit chewy so when you put the broth in here it cooks it just right all right oh by the way if you look in here come over here real quick I put in the the meatballs I cut them up into quarters as you saw. As you can see, as I pour it in, it's cooking the meat. Voila. Amazing, right? See how the meat's been cooked? Don't worry, you're putting it in raw, but it's coming out cooked. Now, what you wanna do, is come over here, move my Dr. Pepper over. These greens, Call them greens because they're green. Got the green onion sprinkling in there. Got the cilantro sprinkling it in there. The limes. So all these ingredients here, we got soy sauce. These are kind of a must for me. The broth is already good the way it is. Delicious by the way. But we always like to have these ingredients to, to customize our taste. So we got the soy sauce fish sauce. Christina hates fish sauce by itself, but she puts this in a lot of stuff and it tastes good. Uh, sriracha, y'all know about that. We got the uh, chili garlic sauce. Got a little bit of sugar and some crushed pepper. And then some, some fried garlic. All this stuff can be bought at the Asian store, mainly the Vietnamese Asian store, okay? Not the H Mart. The H Mart doesn't have everything. There's more variety at the Vietnamese store. Okay, I love lime. I put about two slices in. Just squeeze it on in there. Just like that. Y'all saw us with this stuff. This has gotten cold, but it's all right. I'm just gonna stick some of this in there. I can afford to eat a little bit more of that. Okay, fish sauce. Again, you gotta do it to your taste. You gotta experiment with it, because I got mine down to the science. 
and I can make mine taste the same every single time. So I know how many shakes. I can't share it with y'all because I want y'all to copy of me. Got the sriracha. I like mine spicy. Rosny loves the sriracha. She puts a lot of that in there. The garlic. A little bit of sugar. I don't put too much. Just a dab. See that? It looks amazing and basically what you do next is just stir it up. Oh my gosh guys, my mouth is watering. Yummy. Let's have a bite. Let's see. It's just, what I do first is just take a little slurp of the juice. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Man, no restaurant can beat this. This is homemade taste guys, homemade taste. This isn't like those ones, I mean the, the restaurants are fine, but this is homemade taste. And um, if I were to say like this tastes like the restaurant, it doesn't because it tastes better. Mmm. So this is how I, I normally eat. I'll take some noodles, put it just like that. I'll put a dab of, of meat. It's gonna be a big bite in this one. Take a little bit of juice. Don't let it burn your mouth. Blow it a little bit. <clears throat> Woo! That's good. All right, guys. Go out there and make your pho. Let me know how it goes. But mine is really good. Hopefully this is inspiring to you. For those of you who have been asking how to make pho, here you have it, guys. The best pho in the world. Even my mom complimented me on how great my pho is. Now that's that's saying something, right, Nate? Mama don't, don't ever compliment other people on their, their food. Um, but for this one, she did. And um, I'll take it. So we're going to eat now. Have a good night. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. We'll check you all later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dang, man, that's good.